Okay, today we'll be talking about a topic that I get asked about a lot lately, and that is how I perform my songs live. A lot of people are always coming up to me and saying, Alex, you're so talented. Your songs are so crazy intricate. How is it possible that you are able to pull them off live? And, you know, I've, I've really uh, been through the ringer, tried a bunch of different stuff over the years. I've been playing live with this project since I think 2017, 2016, so about six years. I'm going to get into what I'm using now and what I've done before. But first, a word from one of our many wonderful sponsors. Yo, this is a Moon Dragon Fitness Gym, man, all about metal. Look at this shit. There's even a metal, heavy metal guitar in the gym, man. We learned to keep up and kick some. Look at this. Look, people run around with this kind of stuff down here, like metal, metal everywhere. And I'll play around, man. I make people beat them with metal. I just beat them with metal until they, until they don't stop lifting weights. Metal everywhere. Metal. I should have named the place Metal Dragon, but uh... as a first time. Um, I've simplified my live set down to just me on vocals and this guy right here, the 1010 Music Black Box. For anybody who's not familiar, this is a pretty wild little piece of technology. It's basically a doll in a box. I've, I've uh, got it last summer, so I haven't even had it a year yet. I've played a couple different shows with it. Actually, here's a video of me performing that was the first time using it. I first started by bouncing down all of the different sections of all my songs into stems and then through those stems you can create songs on here. But that got a little tedious and so then now I just bounce everything down to um, an instrumental or who's ever mixing my song bounces everything down to an instrumental and I just play that and sing along to it like karaoke style. It's very simple. If I've learned anything over the years about performing live is that uh, anything that can go wrong is going to go wrong eventually, especially, you know, if you're touring or um, so laptops are not reliable. Um, Basically, the more stuff that you're lugging around, the more room for error there is. So, yeah, it's pretty much just me in that little box. I bring a guitar just in case to any show, in case for whatever reason that thing doesn't work, and then I can just play an acoustic set. The first show I played with backing tracks was at the Lo-Fi in Seattle in January. I think it was January 31st. It was right after David Bowie died, because I did like a Bowie trick. I used my laptop and an interface. I didn't really need an interface for live stuff, but I just thought it would make everything, I don't know, sound more legit. And then I used a program called Mainstage. And Mainstage basically did what I'm doing now with the black box and just took all of the files and you export the stems and then put the stems together it plays them back i just thought it'd be more reliable than just using logic they're probably the same i think main stage had like a lower cpu but if you're running backing tracks live you know just running it off a laptop it's it's, it's all going to be pretty similar i used the laptop and main stage for quite some time then i just used uh, logic and then i had a zoom r8 that i would have as backup and run tracks through that and then when i went on tour in 2019 i was still oh yeah also it should be noted during this time i was still playing guitar and singing and also keyboard along with the backing tracks which is just way too much stuff to set up way too much stuff to lock around i really did not need all that stuff Sometimes I'd even, I had an SP-404, sometimes I'd bring that with. It was all pretty unnecessary. I really wasn't, you know, confident enough in myself as an artist performing live, so I thought if I had a bunch of crap with me on stage, then, you know, people would think I'm talented or something. It really wasn't until, I think, the end of 2019 that I just started performing karaoke style like I do now, where I would bounce everything down to an instrumental and uh, sing along to it. But yeah, you can do this with your phone. You can, you know, bounce everything down. Three things to kind of make everything a little easier is, is try to not to have too much time between songs. I'm still working on a way with this that I can just have the songs kind of blend into each other. I may just do like one long track and then just you know hit play on that but the load time on that between different tracks isn't too bad but yeah you want to cut down on as much time in between songs as possible especially if like you're a solo artist on stage playing to backing tracks because if you have other you know musicians and stuff with you they can kind of like talk or noodle around on something or make some noise but when you have like dead air on stage it really kills the energy 
have a couple different backups, you know, have your set backed up on a phone, on a computer, on any number of devices, because, you know, like I said, anything that's going to go wrong, it's going to happen when you're performing. Yeah, basically, you know, you, you don't even want to think about how the sound is going to be made. You want to think about your performance and, and connecting with your audience. And if you're spending too much time worrying about, you know, hitting this pedal or this button or this key at this time, you know, it, it, it just kind of detracts. You have to sort of think of yourself as like a front man of your own band and the front man's only job, not their only job, but, you know, the front man's there to, to, to really, you know, bring the audience in. So yeah, you're, you're almost becoming like a cheerleader for your own songs. Yeah, so simplify, make sure you have as little dead air between songs as possible. Have fun. Those are the three takeaways from today. Ah, uh, man, these are getting bad.